often think about the words I use a lot, like where they came from, what the way they actually get used in, in sort of current discourse. And then I also think about like what I want them to mean and ways they could be interpreted. I was very influenced by an old TED talk by Aaron McKeon about being a lexicographer and uh, rather than being a policeman for words, rather than being more like a fisherman, I believe is how she put it. She's catching the words and uh, seeing how they're being used in the public. And one of the words that obviously comes around a lot is technology. And I see the word being used to talk about things that aren't technology and also being used to sort of encompass or subsume things. So it leaves stuff out and it falsely uh, identifies things uh, to the extent that you, the way that you see it used is you see it, you know, it's gadgets, it's technologies, right? It's phones and, you know, computers and, and software. And it was Danny Hillis who said technology is everything that doesn't work yet. And I know he was being facetious, but I think that's the opposite of accurate. Like a defining factor of technology is that it does work and it works for everybody. And it's just a matter of the, the stuff that doesn't work is the stuff that you can see. And if it, once it does work, it sort of once it starts to the actual implementation methodology gets sorted out, the technology just sort of disappears from view. Um, and of course, you know, there are technologies like, you know, fire is not a technology, but reliable ways of starting a fire absolutely is, as is a reliable way of keeping it from getting out of control. And, you know, so everything is a technology that, 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 that has an artifact. But I, I think that uh, Ursula Franklin put it really well. She was like, you know, technology is both fish and water. You know, the, the Greek is techne and logos. So like talking about skill is what, it, what, what that translates literally to. And that is the sort of the definition that I use. Like technology is a transmissible skill. And the way that you think about that is to contrast it with like a, a non-transmissible skill or at least a less transmissible uh, or like a, a partially transmissible. So um, I would say musical instruments, sports, martial arts, so those kinds of things are, uh, you know, painting, drawing, those are semi-transmissible. So like you can have a teacher who will tell you stuff, but the skill that you cultivate is, is sort of non-symbolic. It sort of involves your own body in a lot of sense in a lot of ways and and there's just there's just stuff that nobody could tell you about art or music or martial arts or you know uh, sports or something like that you, you have to sort of learn it yourself by rote so yeah skills can be learned but but technology can be taught in in uh, a sort of exhaustive uh, sense uh, you know, when you look at every patent, the, the patent's uh, its title is method and apparatus for blah, blah, blah. And that, I think, is an important aspect of technology that gets lost when we sort of just focus on the gadgets and then focus on the artifacts and outputs of, of, of technological processes. Because there's, there's a couple sort of baked in assumptions. One is a sort of the technology just falls from the sky. Another one is that the technology is, is somehow inherently proprietary. And obviously that's not the case because if it was inherently proprietary, we wouldn't have patents. My sort of assertion is that you should always be able to exhaustively write down like a spec for, for how to transmit a, uh, a technology. 
Uh, you should always be able to do that, or it's not a technology, it's something else. It's just a non-transmissible skill at that point, or at least semi-transmissible. So there's this sort of a, a component of being able to exhaustively write down, you know, like how to replicate it, which is effectively what a patent is. Uh, it's an instruction manual, uh, or at least it should be. I mean, the, the, the sort of quality of patents has degraded over the, over the years and and whatnot so it's not at, they're not as exhaustive as they as they once were but sort of you know historically that's what they that's what they were you should be able to rebuild re replicate i mean it's like what the, all again patent it's what the word patent means like lay open um but i i'm digressing about patents the thing about technology and and this is i think really what i wanted to get to is that it anybody should be able to read the spec and it should represent like a capability, like some kind of material capability. And then you can have sort of variations in the style. You know, you can have variations in technique on top of that. But the actual capability itself and the methodology, like how to do the thing, is sort of invariant under those differences. So like every, you know, everybody who knows how to make a hat, you know, might make different kinds of hats, but like hat as a concept is a sort of in, invariant thing. And like you might make it out of straw, you might make it out of leather, you might make it out of felt, you might, and there's all sorts of different ways of doing it. And those would be potentially individual technologies. But uh, the goal is sort of the same, or at least to a first approximation. And what gets touted as as technology and we see like sort of our it's like a decoration or it's a particular configuration that you know that's a design that's that's a different different thing and I, mean, I often sort of say that uh, engineering is going from zero solutions to one solution and design is going from infinitely many solutions to one solution and those are different classes of problem the detail that I wanted to get to about technology, though, that I think is really salient for today is that it's kind of an inherently subversive process. And I mean, thinking about technology as a process, thinking about it as systematizing a method of, of getting some result or other, is the reason why I, I lean on this so hard is precisely because to be able to look at it as a process and to say like, it is it sort of inherently subversive? Like the thing about developing a technology is you never need like more consent. You know, you need people to let you do it. You know, you need to be ignored <laughs> effectively. But as far as supporters are concerned, you, you know, you only need as many people as you need to do it. And that, that may sound tautological, but, you know, so say, for example, it's something, you know, to build a cyclotron or, you know, build the, you know, build CERN while, you know, you need a, you know, an entire consortium of, of, of countries and companies and you know, billions of euros to build CERN. But to design the web, you know, one guy, one year, and all he needed was his salary, you know, so that he didn't get, uh, you know, kicked out into the, off, onto the street. And so I always keep that in mind, like the proponents or developers of a technology, like you only need as many people as you need and you only need as much money as you need. And, and just for everybody else to leave you alone you know, or otherwise you do it in secret, like a la Manhattan Project or what have you. But uh, I think that the focus on everything that is new is kind of mislaid, and the focus on gadgets is also mislaid. Thinking about technology as a process uh, rather than an outcome, I think is important. So yeah. Uh, technology, think about it as a skill that you can write down. Think about it as like a sort of binary capability 
that either exists or doesn't and then you know sort of stylistic and and sort of var variations under that design variations under that uh, regime are sort of a separate concern anyway gonna finish my coffee